This is so important. Really understand what I'm about to say to you. And it's not enough to just run a Facebook ad. It's not enough to just run a YouTube ad. It's not enough now to just shoot a video. There is a, a process to turn them from a stranger to a client. It goes so much deeper than just quote unquote driving traffic. Good stuff. Here's the five steps. Step one, write down attention slash hooks. Attention and hooks. We'll come back to that. Step two, the bait slash entry point. The bait slash entry point. Third, value slash relationship. Value slash relationship. That's step three. Step four, no slashes. Step four is just the offer. Okay. Step four is the offer. Step five is the close. These are the five steps and you need to decide how they make sense for you. And I'm going to walk you through a bit more of the detail of each one. So let's dive deeper into step one. you got those five steps. you got them written down. Let's start with step one, attention and hooks. Okay. And I, if I, you see me looking down, it's because I got my notes. Which, by the way, if you don't have one of these, this is called a Remarkable 2 tablet. This thing is the Don. <laughs> this is, I've actually renewed my love for writing. It's really cool. Anyway, attention and hooks. We often think that once we've built a sales page, we've created an offer, right? Then it's just a case of, okay, now I drive traffic, right? I'm going to go to Facebook or I'm going to go to YouTube. John said to do those paid ads. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, give those a, give those a whirl. And we, we think about it. That's just a one dimensional thing. It's just, okay, I drive traffic. I go to the Facebook shop, I buy some traffic and I see if I can turn that traffic into any, you know, paying clients. I do the same on other platforms. There is a step before that. And that's the attention and the hooks that you use to get attention. It goes so much deeper than just quote unquote driving traffic. Okay. Before we can even drive traffic before we will get clicks to our website, our sales funnel, our lead magnet, our webinar, whatever it is. Okay. Before that happens, we have to grab someone's attention. And that is the harder thing to do right now. And that's the thing that you've got to stay front and center in your mind. It's not enough to just run a Facebook ad. It's not enough to just run a YouTube ad. It's not enough now to just shoot a video. You have to aim to grab someone's attention in a way that it hasn't been grabbed before. Or you're saying something that will cause intrigue. You're saying something that will captivate their attention. You've got to realize that for all of you, the coaching, the training, the courses, the, the, the services that you're providing right now, and the, the entry point that you have, they've heard it before, right? There is a gazillion and one people helping with fitness coaching helping with marketing coaching, helping with dog training, helping with um, hypnotherapy, right? There's, there's so many people. So the person that's going to win is the person that can grab attention. What does that mean? People are scrolling in their newsfeed, okay? Scrolling in their newsfeed, watching videos, checking out what their friends had for dinner the night before, all this kind of stuff. What can you do to stop them, to stop the scrolling, to pay attention to what you have to say and what you have to offer. We have to grab the attention first, which happens in the first couple of seconds. Then we can talk about driving that traffic somewhere. Yeah. But your traffic efforts will be terrible, terrible, terrible if you don't know how to grab someone's attention. By the way, a couple of easy ways to do this, a couple of easy ways to, to create hooks and angles to gain attention is to go to the Facebook ad library. Just do a, just do a, a Google search for Facebook ad library. Okay. And you can just search for all of your competitors. You can see the ads that they're running. Okay. You can see the ads that they're running. You can see um, the hooks they're using, the, the, the headlines they're using, all that kind of stuff. You can also look at a, 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 a software called Vidteo. I think that's how you say it. Vidteo.com. That's a, a spy tool for YouTube. And you can see what other people are doing with their YouTube ads. You can, you can learn from the hooks that are, that are working well. Okay. So that's step one is attention. Then step two, Step two is the bait and the entry point, okay? Now, it's step one and step two that work together to drive traffic. 
we gain attention. Now, what are we doing with that attention? Where are we sending them? What's happening? Okay. Well, well, what we need in this step is we need to have something that will actually entice them to act on the attention they've just given you. Because you could grab their attention in the news feed, you could grab their attention on YouTube, but then everything else you say in the ad just doesn't really appeal to them. So you've got to have something that you can offer them. What is the bait? What's the entry point? So for me, as you well know, in fact, let me, let's test you guys. Let me know in the chat. Um, what do you think my main entry point is for my business, for my company? Papillion got it straight away. Webinars, that is the main entry point for me. Okay, now you can choose what that is for you, but I want to make sure I'm grabbing a name and an email address. I want to make sure that I'm grabbing attention and having them act on that attention and moving forward to something that's actually attractive to them. So if I can put together a really attractive webinar with a great headline that's going to appeal to where they're at, the issues they've got, the solutions they need, okay, then we're on to a winner. What else might it be? Well, something like this. This is what we're experimenting with right now. This is a lead magnet for us. It's called the No Pitch Webinar Blueprint. And it basically outlines how we run our webinars, just quick 45 minute webinars that uh, attract the right type of clients for us. And one thing I want you to know about the bait, this is so important. The bait and the entry point, really understand what I'm about to say to you, has to be something that relates to the end offer. Okay, something that actually makes sense to get them on the path to becoming a, 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 a customer or a client for you. So it's not enough for me to just say, hey, you know, opt in on this page and I'll, I'll you know, send you a, a year's supply of you know, jam. You know what I mean? Like maybe there's some, some jam lovers that would love a, a year's supply of jam, but that's not going to get them any further to becoming a coaching client for our marketing consultancy. Step three value and relationship value and relationship okay we do not want to go straight from our bait and our entry point into making an offer okay we do not want to go from steps two to four and skip that relationship building part you got to realize that people online right now who genuinely would be interested in whatever product or service it is that you have they would be a good client for you. They would actually be interested in giving you money. There is a, a process to turn them from a stranger to a client. And that process includes building some relationship and providing value. If you try to jump too quickly to making an offer, you'll actually be met with resistance as opposed to them actually wanting to move forward and, and perhaps taking action. You have to provide value. And it's actually more and more so now as we're into, you know, well into 2021. And as we move towards the end of the year, my word, this is becoming more and more important. People don't just buy on the first exposure to you. A question came up in our Facebook group today, you know, where someone said, John, you talk about webinars all the time. What about just a video sales letter? What about if I just take someone from an opt-in and just take them to a, a video sales letter straight away? They can just buy something right there and then. You know, why don't we just shorten the, the sales cycle? I meet them online with an ad. I take them to my bait and to my, um, into my entry point, yeah, into my sales funnel. And, you know, scrap a 45, 60 minute webinar, scrap this, that, and the other one. I just tell them what I got and let them buy it. And it's like, ah, but you're missing it. You're missing the value piece. You're missing the relationship that needs to be built. This has this has been going on for a very long time. This is not new. This is not new that people, you know, pay for things based on the trust that they have with a relationship with someone. You know, like, just think about it. Let's say, let's say you're looking for insurance on your car, right? Let's just use a wacky example. You're looking for insurance on your car. Someone bumps into you in the street, right? <laughs> They've got their clipboard, you know, they're ready to make you an offer for cheaper car insurance and, and this, that, and the other. They could well be the best insurance company around but you just bumped into that person in town. It doesn't matter that they've got a great offer. It doesn't matter that, you know, they've got all these discounts left, right and center and that perhaps on the surface, it even sounds pretty good. You don't know that person. 
you've never met them before, you don't know them from Adam, there's no relationship being built, you're probably not going to sign up right there on the spot. But now imagine you speak to your spouse or you speak to a good friend of yours or someone from your church or someone that you've known for many years and you're having a coffee and whatever, and they say, oh, by the way, dude, I've got to tell you, I signed up to this um, new insurance company, never heard of them before, but it turns out they've been around for 10 years. They gave me the best rates, it was this, that, and the other, best cover, their customer support has been amazing. Look, I'm, I'm blown away. Hey, that's interesting. I was just thinking about getting some insurance or I need some. It's coming up here for renewal in three weeks. Man, you've got to, like, seriously, give, give that company a shot. They're, they're neat. You know nothing more about that company than when you did when that person approached you in the street, but there's relationship built with the person that was telling you about it. So you're actually buying into the trust that you have with that person. All right, so step four. Step four is two steps left. Step four is the offer, okay? Step four is the offer. A couple of things that I need you to know when we talk about an offer, and this is really important. There's a big difference between an offer and a product and a service. There's a big difference between an offer and a course. There's a big difference between an offer and coaching, okay? The coaching, the product, the service, the course, that's the thing that you're selling. An offer is the way you package up that thing. It's the way you are offering it. It's the way you are positioning it. It's the messaging surrounding why they would want this thing. Okay? Big, big difference. And it also leads to a big, big problem if you don't actually comprehend what I just said. Because otherwise you'll tell someone that you've got a coaching program, you tell someone you've got a course, you'll tell someone about your service, your product, okay? And they won't sign up, they won't buy it. Why? Because it wasn't positioned in a way that sounded irresistible. It wasn't offered in the right way. Big difference. The thing, and now how do we offer this, okay? It, it, makes, it makes all the difference. Final step. Step five, the easiest one. Easiest one of them all, the close. Okay? This is actually far easier than you may expect. When we think about the close, okay? When we think about the close, we think about a used car salesman just trying to close you on that car. We think about the person on the phone trying to sell you insurance. We spoke about that earlier, right? Like when we think about closing someone, it's got this negative connotation to it. You know, I'm going to close them. I'm a closer, right? Or we're just getting caught up in the sales malarkey. That stuff only goes so far. You know what I mean? Like all of those sales tricks that people talk about and this, that, and the other, and all the classic sales phrases, you know, well, I can't afford it. Well, then you can't afford not to do it. You know, it's like all of that is garbage. You know, it doesn't work. But when we think of the close, we think of that kind of negative connotation. If you do steps one to four successfully, the close actually closes itself, okay? Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you're completely out the picture and nothing needs to be said or done, right? Of course, on the phone, you need to describe your offer correctly, right? Explain what's included find out if it's actually a good fit for that person or whatever else. And by the way, this is if you're doing a phone, a phone close. If not, if you're selling something directly on a webinar, right? If you're selling something directly on a webinar, then you're going to make sure that there's some urgency to take action right now. You're going to throw in some extra bonuses to make sure, you know, you're going to, you're going to really make a point of the fact this is an offer for right here, right now. Okay. So of course there's going to be some urgency for it, but ultimately we don't have to do any of that crap, quite frankly. Okay, because step one to four built for that moment. Okay, because we have attracted the right type of people with the bait and the entry point. We've grabbed their attention. We've grabbed attention of, of ideal primed prospects for us. Then we've got them in into our entry point with some bait that is actually a good fit for them. So it's interesting to them, a webinar, leave it, whatever it is, it's interesting, it's on topic. The webinar provided a ton of value right? A ton of relationship being built. They're really connected with you. They liked your style. They get you. You're, they're vibing with you. They want to speak to you. So they book a call. 
they felt good about that decision. They realized, hey, I'm not just going, I'm not just going into a, you know, a dead end sales call that I'm just going to get pushed. They realized, hey, there's something different about this person. Okay, I want to book call and move forward. Now the phone call can just be a really relaxed um, phone conversation to see if they're actually a good fit. It makes your job so much easier. Something that you would dread, you'd absolutely dread, is if you had three calls booked for today and you are just, you, you, you don't know anything about the person. Someone was a referral from someone that you don't even really know. So you know nothing about this person. You're going into a blind phone call. The second one was someone that hit you up, hit you up on social media and didn't really, sounded like a bit of a douchebag, but you were like, ah, oh, well, I've got no one else to speak. Just I'll speak to that person. Yeah, I'll talk to you on Wednesday. Right, and now you've got, so you've got three calls today. You're dreading it. There's actually a way to set this up so that you are having people coming to you that are interested in you you can actually cancel calls that don't feel like a good fit. So then you are only speaking to people that you're actually going to have good conversations with. And you can do this for any price point. Remind me in the chat real quick, what price point do you guys sell at right now? Or, or, I, or ideally, what would you sell at? If it's a course, if it's a, a coaching program, what do you sell at? Okay, Greg's 5K. Nice. Barry, 13,000. Jade, 2K, Terry, 300 to 3K, 1,000 to 2,000, 500, 2,500, 2,500, 15 to 25K, love it. Executive coaching, very cool, 597, 597. So check this out. Even those of you that are saying, um, you know, 600 pounds, $1,000, 597, that, even at that price point, we've been testing this recently and testing it with our clients, and you can actually get overwhelmingly better results, okay, selling a $1,000 course or a $500 course over the phone. We think that we have to sell directly on a webinar. And of course, there is some opportunity there and you can do that. And we sell our courses night and day on our webinars and that is attractive. But you can also take phone calls with people that are interested in that price point. And, uh, and it actually works really well. We've got someone in our coaching right now, his name is Ben. He messaged us just yesterday. I might even be able to just show you this actually because he started doing this and he, you know, we, he's got two offers actually. He's got one offer that is 450 pounds and another one that's 3000 pounds. And in fact, I'll just show you this. You can't see my screen yet. Cause I'm just, um, I'm just pulling this up, but just give me a second here. Yeah. So Ben, look, Ben posted in our, in our private client group, uh, 19 hours ago, he said 11,000 pounds cash collected with 30,000 future revenue, meaning payment plans yet to come in from the first seven days of doing this. And he was just thanking me and the team, whatever else. And, you know, it was, it's cool. We're, we're seeing this on a, on, a, on a more frequent basis now. Now what Ben had, he's got two offers. He's got a 450 pound, 3000 pound. He sent me a message. We communicate with our clients on, a, on an application called Voxer. Maybe some of you know it's an old school app, but it's a way to just um, chat back and forth on a, on, a, on a daily basis if we need. He said, dude, you've opened me up to this world of higher ticket. He was selling his program at 30 pounds, 30 pounds. And he said, man, I'm trying to sell this on a, on, a, on a sales page and it's not selling. I said, man, firstly, increase your darn prices. Secondly, try just jumping on the phone. And so he did a webinar presentation where at the end of the webinar, he offered a chance to book a call. He had 80% of people on that webinar book a call with him. It was only a small webinar. He had 40 people on. He had less than the amount of people that are on the line right now, okay, on this Zoom. He had 40 people on the line, 30 of them, or I think it was over 30, 32 or something, booked a phone call, okay? And I don't know the exact close percentage, but I think it was something like 70 or 80% of people were closing. And of course, from 40 people, 40 people on a webinar, he's done 11,000 pounds cash collected, 30,000 pounds with payment plans. I mean, look, how many of you would take 11,000 pounds cash collected from a webinar of 40 people if you were taking a few, a few calls, okay? 30,000 yet to come in. So now the next stage with Ben is I said, man, here's the next phase. You've tested that out. Next phase is that you should really be shooting for your $3,000 package because he did sell a lot of the 450s. Now, granted, those phone calls were quick. Usually at that price point, people just jump on. They've got a couple of questions, takes 10 or 15 minutes. They get across the line, 450 in the pocket. If you're converting one in two people and it's taking 15 minutes, you know, you're talking about uh, that's near a thousand pounds an hour for your time. So still, you know, a, a, a well-paid process. But I said, look, now let's use the 450 as a downsell and let's use the 3000 as the main thing you go for. 
He just needs he needs an extra confidence boost now that he can just go straight to the 3,000, which he'll keep doing. It's cool. It's working. So anyway, that's the process. Those are the five steps. Let's recap here as we come into a close. Okay, step one for your notes, attention and hooks. It's not just about driving traffic. It's about commanding attention, getting hooks. Step two, the bait, the entry point. Step three, the value and relationship mid funnel. Okay, step four was the offer and step five is the close.